Welcome everybody to this fantastic Careers in Construction Jobs webinar. I want to thank all the attendees and all the panelists for joining me today. It's going to be a super exciting session. Why? Because this is all about jobs and we're going to hear about real vacancies. These are real jobs that people can apply for straight after this event finishes. So we're going to be having a fun packed hour of this event where we're going to be joined by Alistair of the CEO of the Civil Engineering Contractors Association in a rounds table discussion with myself and David from Human Resources Specialist Randstad and of course Victoria from Balfour BT Vinci. Now if you don't know who they are they're one of the big businesses that is a joint venture delivering HS2. So they've got a lot to say about careers as well as developing people for their future in the industry. Now, they're also going to go to the really important parts of that presentation later on after the panelists, because we're going to be hearing, folks, yes, about jobs, jobs all over the West Midlands region that people can actually apply for, like I said, straight away. So we're going to hear from HS2. We're going to hear from the huge business that's called Lendlease, who've got lots on offer. We're going to hear from VGC Group. Danny Sullivan and my friends at Lynch Plant Hire all are going to be sharing today with you the jobs that they desperately need you to help them fill. So folks, we've also got a very special guest who's actually recorded a video session for us because he can't be here today, but that special guest is the one person that is really, really pushing hard for all these jobs and development in our West Midlands region with the West Midlands Combined Authority, and that is the Mayor of the West Midlands, Andy Street. So without further ado, enough from me, let's hear all about this really important and exciting event, but also what is the wider scene happening in the West Midlands, and Andy's gonna tell us all about it. So we're just gonna roll his video shortly. So stay tuned to that, and we'll be back with the panelists. Thanks very much again for joining us. Hi there, Andy Street, Mayor of the West Midlands here and delighted to be able to say a few words at the Careers in Construction event today. I'm just sorry I can't be with you because it's always brilliant to put a hard hat on, a jacket and actually take part in some of the activities. But sorry, I'm not there today. Now, let's just think how important construction is to our economic futures and the opportunities that it provides for so many young people across our region and indeed mature people who are retraining. Before the pandemic hit, construction was the fastest growing sector of our economy and we know it was creating lots of jobs, indeed record employment levels across the West Midlands. And it's taken a hit as with all parts of the economy from the pandemic. But what we've tried to do is work hard to make sure that the big construction projects are absolutely intact and on course. And if you just think of some of the incredible projects there are across the West Midlands, of course, the mummy and daddy of them all is HS2. And we got the go ahead for that during the pandemic, the sign of the commitment to the construction sector. So that uh, one project will actually have thousands of jobs. And that's why we've been doing so much work getting people ready for opportunities in that project. Then there are things that are already committed and well underway, like of course, the Commonwealth Games. That's also a billion pounds of investments. And I was lucky enough to go and see the Aquatic Centre out at Sandwell just a few weeks ago. And then there are some of the local infrastructure projects, whether it be University Station, the extension of the Metro, building out some of our colleges like the Institute of Technology in Dudley, and of course, all the works going on in Coventry to prepare for City of Culture and the Combined Authority putting in more money than anybody else. £31 million of preparations in Coventry City Centre. So we've tried really hard to make sure that where we can use our funds and bring in government funds, there are lots of construction activities going on. And it's brilliant to see all those sites now up, live, reopened. Indeed, they did a brilliant job to only be closed for a short period. So 
So what we've also got to think, as well as having the activity there, what are we doing to get the training opportunities going? So what we've done in a number of the biggest sites, like the Aquatic Centre, like in Coventry, like at the Athletes Village, we've set up what we call these training hubs, where we give a commitment to local people being able to have basic training and then job interviews at the end of those. And also our construction gateway scheme has proven very successful already in taking people perhaps who've fallen out of another role or maybe were unemployed in the first place and actually giving them some opportunities. And it was brilliant to me go and see a number of those schemes out, for example, in Dudley, really practical uh, programmes there. And then, of course, there's working with our colleges on making sure that there are the right opportunities there. It was brilliant to see the scheme up at Wolverhampton College, for example. So if you take all that together, we're making sure that the jobs are actually being created in the major projects. Then we're working with all of the providers to make sure that there is actually really great practical training available right now. And of course, on the back of the pandemic, we know there's going to be more people looking for those opportunities. So what I hope you will hear today, if you are one of those people, you'll hear from the brilliant providers who are doing all of that, and you'll hear probably from some of the people who've benefited from it, because there's nothing better than, I remember back in the winter, meeting uh, a couple of young Birmingham residents who were previously uh, actually homeless, and they'd come through one of our schemes and were now looking at a job with HS2. So, you know, it is genuinely true that there are some life-changing opportunities there in construction. So all that remains to be said is thank you for Peter, to Peter for hosting this, to all of the providers, some of the people who've gone through our schemes, and I hope you find it a genuinely inspiring day. Good luck. Well, what can you say, folks? Andy has been out there really working hard for the industry and supporting all of the people that we're going to hear from today. And what we've really got in the West Midlands and the combined authority is a lot of different projects happening around the country. So that's why I want to bring in some of the panelists here today to have a discussion about what that really means, because there are lots of jobs and lots of different jobs and opportunities. And so what we've been very grateful for is that we've got three really exciting panelists to come and talk to us today about the wider industry, about human resources, and how you can get that job into the construction industry, and also how you can develop your career. So I'm gonna start by introducing somebody that's really got his finger on the pulse because he, is the Chief Executive Officer of the Civil Engineering Contractors Association. His name's Alistair. He's been working in the industry and working for the industry with all the major players in that sector for some time. And Alistair's gonna really give us an impression of what is actually going on in the wider context for the West Midlands region and how there's lots of different opportunities coming across. So I'd like to welcome Alistair into the panel discussion right now. Hello, Alistair. Seem to be having, a, oh, here he is. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. Slight delay in uh, Alistair joining us today. Alistair, we're just going to um, wait for your microphone to come on as well. Alistair joins us. Thank you very much, Alistair. The wonders of connecting in uh, on these things right now, but we're here now, Alistair. Please Glad do to see the technology's what working. Yeah, um, so, uh, yeah, so it's it's an interesting one. So obviously we're here today to talk about jobs uh, and there's a really good story to tell here, but I'm not going to start talking about jobs. I'm actually going to start talking about something that's a bit more important than that. Um, it doesn't matter what else you're talking about at the moment. There is, there's only one story in town and that's around COVID-19. So everything that we're talking about today before that, our first priority must be looking after the safety of our existing workforce uh, and looking after the safety of the people that are coming to join us. Um, COVID-19 at the start was a very worrying time for everyone and the construction industry was part of that. So right early on, back in March, April, the, the work that we were doing was to try and make sure that we could be sure that everyone was safe on site. Um, 
I'm really pleased by how the industry's responded to that. And actually now the statistics say that you are safer on a construction site than you are generally uh, out there in the economy. Such are the measures that have been put in place. But I wanted to talk about that because that work is why actually while other parts of the economy are perhaps losing jobs right now and particularly in the West Midlands, there is a bit of recruitment, in fact, a lot of recruitment uh, going on in construction because the industry is able to work uh, and he's just talked about some of those opportunities in the, in the Midlands, and that is reflected uh, across the rest of the country. We've got a government, uh, regardless of what your other views are about the government, they have this agenda that they say, build, build, build. Um, and so that that's what's driving this need to get more and more people to come into construction. That's about building new homes, the places that we live. The government wants to build more homes now than it ever has at any point uh, in any of our lifetimes. It wants to build new schools and new hospitals. You'll have seen examples of that uh, in the Midlands. In the bit of the industry that I work in, we're in infrastructure. It's about building new roads, uh, new railways. And obviously, again, Andy's mentioned HS2. HS2 is this enormous engine for job creation. There will be brilliant opportunities, not just to have a job for a short while, but to have a career uh, working on HS2 uh, and some of the work that uh, is associated with it. Um, so that's how, as a country, we are going to recover from COVID-19. Um, but we're not going to be able to do that just with the existing workforce. Uh, each year, we need to recruit tens of thousands of new workers. Uh, and those are jobs for everyone. Um, it's a job for whether if you've just left school, if you've left college, if you've left university, or even if you've been looking for work, you've been out of work or you've just recently come out of work um, because either you've lost your job in construction or you've lost your job elsewhere in the, co the economy. As I say, it's, it's a, a chance to get back not just into a job, but to get into a career. Uh, and there's a little secret around that. Um, if you do well, actually average pay in construction is better than in most other uh, sectors of the economy. Um, so I think today you're going to hear from some of the employers that hopefully have some of those opportunities. But also we did recognise that there was a big challenge here, that there were people coming out of the industry, but there was also this big recruitment demand. So over the last few months, We've been working together with the government, with some of these large employers, with small employers, uh, with other industry organisations to create something called the Construction Talent Retention Scheme. So it's a website that you can go to if you search Construction Talent Retention Scheme, and I'm sure we'll be able to send the details of that around after the, uh, the session today. Um, there are hundreds of vacancies on there today, including those in the Midlands, um, and there's a growing number of employers using the system. A lot of them are experienced roles at the moment, I'll be honest about that, but we are growing the number of apprenticeships on there. So if, if you're looking for one of the potential routes in, there's some brilliant ones today, but also I'd suggest do try and sign up to that to see if there's a role on the talent retention scheme for you today as well. So that's just a very quick canter through where we are uh, as an industry. I think there's a lot of other brilliant speakers, so I'm not going to take up too much time today, but hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview uh, of where we are as an industry in terms of recruitment. Peter. Thank you very much, Alistair. I think, you know, that's brilliant. And I think what's fantastic is the construction industry has been working together with organisations like yourself to help strengthen the argument for more investment from the government. And what we're seeing now is that come to fruition. So there is a lot of exciting stuff happening, Alistair. You know, I'm sure we'll be hearing from you again in the future because as we move forward and as these jobs come on board, we're gonna have to create more and more jobs, aren't we, Alistair? Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, I, the, the conversations we're having with government at the moment are not about um, the challenges of people leaving the industry. It's about how are we going to recruit the volume of people we're going to need for the future. Alistair, it's been great to have you on. I am going to move on now. Thank you very much for that big overview. And there's big stuff happening, folks, in the industry. Alistair, thanks very much. And I'll no doubt speak to you soon. Yeah. So that's Alistair there, folks. Uh, thanking you very much, Alistair, for being on and giving us that idea of what's really going on in the industry in a wider context. But one of the biggest things that everybody struggles with, I mean, even myself, I haven't got a CV. I don't know how to apply for jobs. And that is the one thing that really holds people back. So one of the things that is so important and why the West Midlands Combined Authority has asked us to do this panel discussion is the fact that we've also got a real important help that we need to give people when the human resources 
context. And that really means specialists helping people to understand how to get jobs and how to come through into the industry. So I'm really delighted to have David join us. And David is from the human resources specialist, Randstad, who's been working tirelessly with the actual West Midlands Combined Authority to help them deliver solutions to bring people in. And David is hopefully gonna join me very shortly uh, on his webcam uh, so that we can talk about that. David, hello. Great to Good see morning. you. Looks very right. sunny where you are right now, David. And there's a Good sunny morning. outlook, isn't there, David, at the moment for careers uh, in the industry, which Absolutely. obviously Alistair talked to us about. So, David, give us an understanding of what you guys at Randstad are seeing, but also how uh, people uh, can, can really use you guys to actually get into employment. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and thanks for the introduction. Thank you, Alistair, as well. It's very, very important to recognise that as Ranzad CPE, we have a huge rail and infrastructure division within the West Midlands. We work very closely with um, local colleges. Uh, the mayor quite rightly pointed out about Wolverhampton College. We are the, their official partner for new entrants into industry. And what's key is we recognize that there is thousands of jobs and we literally have thousands of blue collar roles every day now if people ring in and if people submit cvs we ask them to be honest honest about their skill sets you know take in the wider picture of the industry so if it's hs2 for example look at do you do a bit of research you know is there bridges is there viaducts is there groundworks to be taken on have a look at the whole picture and then if you don't have them skill sets, so for example, if you aren't a bricklayer, if you're not a joiner currently, let's have a look at ways to develop. And what we find is, particularly, and Alistair made some great points about other industries, other industries are starting to slow. And there is a lot of transferable skills that can go into construction. You know, things like robustness, timekeeping, et cetera, et cetera. These are all key things that we look for into building the workforce, as well as the skilled operators that have been in the industry for two, three, four, however many years it, it may well be. So when, you, when you're writing a, a, a CV, or when you're calling us, be honest, because we have great links all over the UK, but particularly with local West Midlands colleges, as I mentioned, and I make no apologies for sort of mentioning it again, we have a great link with Wolverhampton College to bring fresh people through it into construction, into rail and the infrastructure sector as a whole. So call us, we will look at mapping out a clear path for the guys who are new into the industry, or if there's vacancies that we feel could benefit them and they could benefit the industry, we will look at that. But be honest with us when it comes to the uh, your CVs and do your research. That is absolutely key to maximizing what goes onto the piece of paper, and what the guys in the office, you know, there's a good 40 uh, recruiters uh, within uh, the West Midlands infrastructure team. Let's get as much information, as much research around yourself, around the project, and what type of work you are interested in undertaking for us, and ultimately for the likes of the big projects, HS2, et cetera. Well, what I think that's really important, David, is because actually you, you, a lot of people that might be coming into this webinar, whether they're looking at it live now or whether they'll, they'll look at it after it's uh, put up on the website. I think the one thing that we've all got to recognize in construction is it's also about attitude, isn't it? It's a real team playing industry. And so, you know, you don't have to be afraid if you haven't got the skills. If you've got the aptitude to work in a team, to be part of a team and to actually want to achieve something. The great thing about what we do in construction was we make things. So one day it could be a farmer's field, the next day it's HS2, but and also, you know, inner city brownfield developments like the HS2 station right now, you're seeing us creating something and renewing it and giving it a whole new lease of life, aren't you? So there's a lot to do with putting yourself out there as well, David, and how do you think people should do that? Be proactive is the, is, is the main piece of advice, uh, you know, I, I could give people. Now, 
you, you touched on it and it, a great point do not be afraid okay so pick up the phone give us a call you know we have as i've mentioned hundreds of vacancies particularly local so we understand the importance of the local people interacting with the local projects you know give us a call we are here to help you and help build whatever project we are involved in that is our, our job so first and foremost you know be bold okay give us a give us a call be open with us reach out to us whether that's via the website ranstad.co.uk uh, look at local regions or national but please give us a call we are here to help you and to support new people as well as seasoned professionals into the industry Thanks very much, David. Uh, so David is there to support you getting into the industry, folks. I'm going to say goodbye to you, David, now, because we've got to say hello to Victoria. And while, oh, Victoria's very, very quick on her cam, so we can see Victoria's with us straight away. Now, Victoria is part of something called BBV, but to most of us, that's Balfour BT Vinci Joint Venture. Now, folks, that is a big, big organization that's come together to deliver part of the huge project that is HS2. And one of the remits I know Victoria is hugely passionate about is actually bringing people not just into the industry, as David has helped us talk about, but also developing and training them. Because HS2 is a project that's going to go on for some time. And Victoria needs people that have careers developed and we all need that because the legacy of HS2, which is so exciting for me, is that we're going to have fresh people in the industry, we're going to have developed people in the industry, and we're going to have those people taking the rest of the industry forward when that project finishes. Victoria, wow, I'm going to stop talking now because <laughs> I really want you to come in and tell me about one, what you're really excited about and, and, and accepting people in to the BVV and also what happens when they do join you because it's not just a job it's not people that you're just looking for short time here is it you're looking for careers you're looking to develop people and you're looking for their health to help you deliver the project of a lifetime aren't you we absolutely are and thank you for that um, magnificent build up peter um <laughs> i'll try not to let you down in terms of, of what i'm going to deliver um, so, yeah, my role is actually head of learning and development. So I am responsible once people come into the organisation for providing um, the, the right training to support them to do their job well um, and to develop them to build careers just very much, of, as you've said, right across uh, the business. We, we, this isn't a short term project. It's going to be here for a while. Um, we see people coming in as apprentices, building their careers um, and finishing at a more senior level. You know, we, we'll be personally bidding for more work further up the line um, as the project progresses and that'll give people again the opportunities to, to grow and progress with us but you again it's jobs and skills are very much a key priority both for our customer HS2 and for our area north program and our efforts in this regard very much focused around creating new employment skills and opportunities but for local people and for local communities that really benefit and impact HS2 um, it, it's interesting thinking back to what Alistair was saying, um, COVID has impacted us, but actually we've onboarded 180 people um, since COVID hit. Um, personally, I started on the 1st of May, um, as did our new managing director, Michael Dyke, and a number of others. And we are very much in the build up um, phase of that. And we're looking to create both through direct employment, but also through our supply chain, over 8,000 job opportunities during the life cycle of our project, which is, is quite considerable. So not all of them will be with BBV and Balfour BT Vinci, but some of them will be with our, our major subcontractors that, that we require to, to find, source, and get the people that we need in the right place at the right time. But again, very much local people focusing on helping perhaps those that haven't been um, in employment for a while, we'll be doing lots of skills building as well, um, offering people the opportunities to come and have work experience with us. That will all be things that we're going to do through the Skills Education and Employment Community Alliance. Um, and again, we're really keen um, on our project to make sure 
that it's really representative of the local area. And that means from an ethnicity perspective as well, construction has um, you know, a, a falling behind reputation, if you like, in terms of um, the way it's made up. Uh, and we're very keen to see uh, more job opportunities uh, for, for women, for um, colleagues that are um, BAME background. Um, and also we're really interested in talking to people to, to, to work out how we can make our sites more accessible for perhaps people um, with some mobility issues, um, mobility issues and things like that, so that we are able to provide the best possible work experience um, and work environment for everybody. Um, again, locally, there's lots of low paid um, and insecure employment as well. And interestingly, what, what one of the things that we're very much being encouraged to do internally is think about um, transferable skills. And if I think about some opportunities that in my team um, that will be going out there um, soon, I'm going to need some training support coordinators. Well, actually, we know that the um, hotel and events industry has been quite hit hard by the pandemic but actually people who are very skilled in organizing events would be great for organizing training so we're very much going to look at um, targeting um, those sorts of opportunities is out there because we know there will be people there um, that will be perhaps made redundant again we, we've we've got job roles currently being advertised i think they're called interface managers and, and what's an interface manager well it's somebody who really engages with the local community um, and helps them understand you know we, we've seen we've all seen some of the um press uh, around hs2 and um, personally i saw the, the the people being removed from trees um in a local wood and it's quite distressing to watch and we need people that are out there engaging with the community um you know so if you've got an experience in um customer service you know certainly people who have perhaps been handling quite uh arduous complaints and that that sort of thing you're going to have a great skill match um, very much as David would David was saying about the transferable skills that we'll have um, coming into into the industry um, that, that you know, we're looking to put those sort of people to work and certainly give the opportunity to to have an interview with us um, Again, something else I wanted to talk about, and I know that um, we, we're going to talk specifically about apprentices later, but apprentices will be um, a massive part of our workforce. We're part of the 5% Club, um, and the 5% Club says that 5% of our workforce will be made up of people um, that are um, called emerging talent, so people under 25 um, that are apprentices or perhaps graduates. Um, and again, we're committed to recording 400 apprentices um, through BBVs direct and subcontract workforce over the life cycle of the project. Recently, we've recruited five civil engineers, seven commercial apprentices, five material lab technicians um, and HR practitioners. Um, I have one of those in my team who are all West Midlands re uh, residents. Um, they've, they've started their career now with us on HS2. They were unemployed. Or, or at risk of being not in employment, education or training or, or underemployed where they're in low in, income, um, perhaps insecure or part time work. And we've started them off on, on their careers with us. And as I said at the start, we hope to see them go onwards and upwards um, to do great things. Our apprenticeships are also not um, just for the duration of the apprenticeship. We also take people on um, as full time employees. So when they finish their apprenticeship, they're assured that they're still in employment with us going forward. Um, yeah, and again, we've got current roles in IT and we've got a number of roles um, for people with with A levels that have got an interest in design um, in what we call BIM, um, which is um, a very technical. <laughs> modeling. Yes. There you it's go. The Thank you. Stuff, the <laughs> Dig me out that hole. It? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so, so those are currently up on our website as are material labs testing uh, job vacancies as well. So, you know, please do uh, drop in at our website, which is balthabtvinci.com and the details for that will be shared um, afterwards. But we have a lot of careers opportunities on there at the moment and um, that will only increase um, our own personal recruitment is going to ramp up rapidly between now next March onwards towards um, August so you that there's going to be circa a thousand more jobs being advertised there. Wow Victoria I'm going to say a huge thank you what the uh, number that is eight thousand jobs and 400 jobs for people that haven't even started their thinking about their careers, but they're really, really having an opportunity to join a huge organization and project. And that the way that filters down to your supply chain is really exciting because 
you're saying we're supporting the supply chain to employ these people. So you're getting them to employ people as well, which is really great. That's the top of the tree coming down to the roots and back again, isn't it, Victoria? Absolutely. And it's something, you know, as a client, HS2 are very keen keen to do, not not just with Balfour BT Vinci, but there are um, three other main work civil contractors that are, are working on the project as well. So, you know, the, the likes of Align, EKB, et cetera, you know, they'll all have jobs on their way, vacancies as well. So, you know, we can't all be here. Um, we're very pleased that we were invited to be here. But, you know, there are, it's not, we're, we're not the only people delivering it. We're delivering it. Um, there's numerous other people delivering it too. Well, Victoria, I've got one of those people from HS2 that's going to come on right now and talk about their vacancies. So thank you very much, Victoria. It's been great to hear from you. Remember, these 8,000 jobs, folks. That's huge. And that's just Victoria and their, their teams. There's more, more, more to come from the rest of the JV partners. But let's go straight to Eleanor. And Eleanor is actually responsible for vacancies at hs2 the organization that the bbv and those other jv partners are working with so eleanor i'm going to welcome you on to the actual uh, event as soon as we can and basically eleanor's going to be talking about how the hs2 is developing vacancies and opportunities not just again at the hs2 organization but how that reflects the rest of the industry that's going to actually be delivering HS2. So Ellen is going to be presenting uh, her piece uh, shortly and we are not able to see Eleanor unfortunately today but she's going to be able to present a presentation with us um, shortly and basically what we've got is an opportunity for everybody to listen to HS2, think about the vacancies that they've got but also think about the project in the context of what the project has got to deliver. So for me, the project has got a huge impact that it's going to have on what I would call the industry at large. So we're going to hand over to um, Eleanor shortly and uh, see her presentation. Now, folks, remember, whilst we're waiting for Eleanor to come on, basically, we've got uh, a lot of information that you're going to gather here today. And what we're going to have is all of that information is going to be put on the West Midlands Combined Authority website. Now, that website is the uh, w, uh, wmca.com forward slash uh, construction for the construction industry. So as we wait for Ellen to come on, um, please go and visit that. Put that in to your list of places that you want to be because jobs, jobs, jobs are going to be going on there. Uh, as as the projects and other things roll out today so yeah Eleanor so uh, we've got you into the the panel here let's uh, let's go for it good morning good morning everyone thank you very much for that presentation Peter um, I hope you all can see um, a presentation slide the beginning of a presentation slide and apologies to start with the apology that I'm not able to join you by webcam due to IT restrictions on my part but I also haven't been able to see anyone else apart from Andy um, so I'm uh, flying a little bit blind here my colleagues at once will be helping me uh, move on with the presentation so um, I, I guess we're ready to kick off certainly are Eleanor off you go thank you very much so, as I say, good morning once again. Uh, in the next few minutes, I will be presenting to you a very short overview of the HS2 project, followed by information on career themes at HS2, recruitment and selection principles, and will also signpost you to the routes to access live opportunities and help also with the application process. So, next. I'm going to focus slightly with a few more details on the HS2 project itself. So we are on a slide called Leveling Up Britain. And this is a project I'm really, really excited and really proud to be working on myself. I've been working for HS2 for over five years now, so I've seen it go from a a very small organization with about 500 people to a big project and as Andy we heard from Andy Street earlier today now in its full construction stage 
It will be the new backbone of Britain's rail network and it's connecting the city centres of Birmingham, Manchester, Leeds and London. You could see the way it cuts across the country and it connects the whole country in one railway. Once fully completed, we will have built around 345 miles of track and if you prefer 553 kilometres and that's new high speed track there would be 37 miles worth of bridges and viaducts. And we will also have built 45 miles of tunnels. So really enormous um, uh, cut across the country and enormous um, impact on the construction industry, on in the infrastructure industry in the UK. And I'm going to touch on HS2 careers and career themes now that are going to support the build of this amazing project. So we are on a slide called HS2 careers themes. We have focused on opportunities in construction and railway engineering as well as other roles in operations and maintenance. But uh, the skills that we are looking for range from uh, construction assurance to project management in construction. And I wanted to highlight to you all that new vacancies get released all the time. So recently, for example, we recruited construction assurance managers accountable for providing specialist constructability support and expertise at each stage of the construction process. However, there is also demand for skills across the vast range of other careers and that includes, for example, uh, engineering in terms of civil engineers, mechanical engineers and other engineering critical to HS2. Um, design as well and construction design and design from landscape to architecture. Our design vision is supported by numerous designers working on the project. Um, we talked about BIM and technology, so increasingly in design, construction and engineering, technology plays a big part, even on site, even on construction sites. So we have opportunities in that area as well. And not forgetting environment and heritage, where we will have demand for archaeologists and ecologists, um, and also business support, where I come from, so this is finance, human resources, project management and planning, people that make the business really tick. So moving on to next slide, where I'm going to focus on our recruitment and selection principles very briefly. So we are on slide called recruitment and selection principles. Um, and this is really for us to share with you our values. We have four values that guide everything we do on HS2, and they're not only embedded in our organization, but also in our recruitment and selection practices. Um, our integrity, integrity for us is very important. It is the fairness uh, and it is critical in the recruitment process to treat uh, our candidates with fairness and with collecting dur collected during the selection process. We lead by example and we role model uh, inclusive behaviour, opening opportunities for candidates across a wide range of you know, gender uh, background and uh, different areas of uh, social and economic life. We respect all candidates, we treat them with the respect that they deserve in the process and up to the completion of their um, application. And we focus on the well-being of all individuals that come to um, interact with us in uh, our recruitment and selection uh, processes. Next, we're looking at how actually, yeah? Hi, Helena. I um, just wondered if you could um, just run through the next slides very quickly for me, please. Yeah. Um, so, so we can get the, the next yeah. people on. Uh, thank you very much. We're, um, I'm signposting now our audience to how to apply to our opportunities. Uh, you can apply through uh, live vacancies on our website or you can join our talent pool. Um, and next. 
once you access our career site, you will be able to find not only our live vacancies, but also help with the application process and information on how to prepare, prepare your application, what the selection process looks like and guidance to our values and leadership competencies and framework. And penultimately, my next slide is on uh, practical suggestions and ideas to take away on CV application. So we already touched on that. And just to highlight from our point of view, your CV must include evidence directly related to the criteria of the role. So think about how your skills and experience relate to the job and provide us with specific examples of how you can demonstrate the same skills in different situations or sectors. Okay, and lastly, uh, my last slide is how to keep in touch. We want to hear from you and to keep you updated with the projects. So we are on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and you can check all our careers opportunities we have on our website. And really, really excited to uh, hear from our um, audience and um, look at applications and really welcome you on board. Thank you That's very much, Peter. Fantastic, Eleanor. Thank you so much indeed. There's, uh, sorry I had to interrupt you there. We've got lots to get through today. And I'm going to go straight to Rita from Lendlease to talk about their vacancies. And I must apologise uh, earlier. It's wmca.org.uk forward slash construction. Rita, let's go for it. What have we got at Lendlease and what are the vacancies? Let's tell everybody about it. Hi Peter, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. So I'm Rita Patel Miller, the Social Value Lead for Lendlease um, Midlands. So Lendlease are a, a property and development company um, and our headquarters are in Australia and we, we work over four continents and we um, have employ over 13,000 people across the world. So we're really proud to be working in Birmingham. We're working on the Perry Bar Residential Scheme in Birmingham where we will be creating um, over 1,400 new homes for local people. So we've started work on site in May 2019. So all the main kind of infrastructure works have started, which includes power, water, gas and sewer supplies to the site. So we've got 10 power cranes on site, which you can see from the M6, I saw them myself yesterday, which is an iconic site. And we're currently working on four plots with our supply chain partners, who are Kia, Wilmot Dixon, Vinci and Munnerly. So today um, what we've committed to is to create um, 400 new jobs through these projects of construction. We've already um, created 126 so there's still lots more opportunities available and the kind of opportunities that are available now are going to be for tilers, bricklayers, painters, decorators, finishers, plasterers, roofers, carpenters, joiners, mechanical and electrical engineers. So a quite a big range there. We've also got a training facility on site, which is um, we're running in partnership with the West Midlands Combined Authority and CITB. So that means that you can train on site for these roles. And the whole point of us talking to you about these roles today is that we are still here till summer 2022 um, as Lendlease working on this project. So if you want to get involved in these construction opportunities, all you need to do is complete an expression of interest form that you can um, acquire by emailing PBRS enquiries at lendlease.com or EA team at birmingham.gov.uk. But we are going to be um, promoting these um, websites or these um, email addresses on the West Midlands Combined Authority website. So you can access those opportunities today by linking into that website. Um, we are really, really committed to employing local people. We're working with the Gateway um, training providers with the West Midlands Combined Authority. It's been absolutely fantastic support. We're really looking forward to seeing you and hearing about you wanting to work with us. So please log on to the West Midlands Combined Authority website and we want to know who you are. Rita, I would definitely, definitely want to work for Lendlease. The enthusiasm coming out of you there is absolutely electric. Loads of stuff to do, loads and loads of different jobs. Thanks for joining me, Rita, and thanks for punching that really exciting opportunity out there for everybody. And now it's time for me to go to Q. Hello, you're from VGC Vacancies. And basically, VGC is another business that's got a lot on, hasn't it? Please just tell me all about it. 
We're going to, I think we're just going to turn your, your, you're muted at the moment. I think we're just going to turn you, your, you on there. <laughs> Kira, thank you. So again, whilst Kira's coming into us, just please start talking whenever you can, Kira. Remember, wmca.org.uk forward slash construction. Over to you. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm Kira Price from the BGC Group. We're a trades and labour supplier for the construction industry, and we work across rail, civil engineering, civil engineering, nuclear highways on projects such as High Speed 2, Crossrail, and basically all the major infrastructure projects in the UK we're on. Um, I do have a bit of a presentation. I don't know if that's come up on the um, on the screen at all. No. Uh, there we are. I'm going to turn myself off the um, camera. Go for it. I'll keep talking. I'm, I'm on the second slide, but. Basically, I'm talking a little bit about the, um, the High Speed 2 project with um, Balfour Beatty Bonsi. Um, we're currently at the site setup stage with them waiting for the tunnel boring machines to arrive. So we're hoping for the slurry treatment plant to be constructed by the end of the year and we're building all the compounds for, to enable the works to go ahead. Our workforce is reasonably static at the moment. We've just got a couple of vacancies, but we're, see, we're going to see a large rise in recruitment requirements from about March next year, where we're going to be recruiting in the hundreds for this project. Um, so if you just go on to the next slide, um, why would you want to work for VGC on this project? Well, I think the first thing is that we are going to have a strong focus on encouraging new entrants to the market and a strong focus on local employment. Anyone that works for us on this project will be on a contract of employment, so full employment rights, pay as you earn, holidays, pensions, all the support that you would expect. We also have a big focus on training and development through the VGC Academy. I think last year we spent 500,000 on training. We are going to have a huge number of apprenticeships and work experience placements. And we've actually just received um, a big chunk of funding from the CITB to do a leadership and management program, which will be um, delivered on this project as well. There will be numerous health, safety and wellbeing programs, and you will have a dedicated labour manager. I think the key thing for this project, though, is that it is a generational project. So people will be able to start on this project project as a new entrant and hopefully be in a supervisory and management roles within a couple of years through the investment that we're going to do in learning and development throughout the life cycle. So if we just move on to the next slide, um, we've got a couple of vacancies at the moment that we're currently recruiting for. We're looking for a tally person who's going to control the people movement on and off site. We're looking for, I shouldn't put an acronyms in, uh, DAM is a duty access manager, um, which will be controlling the vehicle movements in and out of the compounds. We'll be looking, we're looking for ground workers, ton electricians, tunnel fitters, and I've got a role for a cleaner starting on Monday. So if you get in contact with our team, if you're interested in that one. Um, if we go on to the next page um, for the future requirements, the requirements are going to be ramping up over um, from about March next year. I'm sorry, if you can just go on to the next slide for me. Um, but from March next year, there's going to be a huge number of requirements for general operatives, which is sort of a real um, entry level role. If you can get your CSCS card, we're going to be working with a number of organisations on pre-employment training programmes to help people get the CSCS card to start in these entry level roles. Um, so general operatives, we will need slinger signalers, we're going to need dumper oper operatives, concrete finishers and, um, and, and, and quite a number of these duty access managers as well. On top of this, we are going to need lots of trades, so carpenters, fixers, supervisors as well. So there's going to be numerous vacancies um, coming on. Um, if you just want to go to the last slide, um, if you are interested in these roles, please can you email our team, either your CV or just a few basic details, and we will get someone to call you back. We also run weekly recruitment webinars, so if you follow us on our social media, you'll be able to see our weekly recruitment webinars, which gives you an updated list of everything that is um, ongoing. You will also find all our vacancies on the Job Centre Plus website and um, the normal job boards that you would go to looking for, for job vacancies. Um, so that's it from VGC. Um, I look forward to hearing from um, as many of you as possible soon. Thank you very, very, very much. There's lots going on there. And it's great to see jobs right now. Everybody get on there. They definitely need that cleaner um, uh, to sort out the office there. So that's fine and uh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Going to go straight away to Danny Sullivan. And our next big jobs uh, session is with Brooke. Brooke, 
Hello, <laughs> thanks for coming on. Tell us about your job. Let's go straight into it because I know we're running uh, shy of time at the moment. Go for I'll it. I'll try to keep it short and sweet. But so if you haven't heard of us already, the Danny Sullivan Group is a family run business leading in the supply of skilled professional labor and trades across aviation, highways, nuclear, rail, tunneling, and utilities. And we've been doing this for over 30 years. We have a vast amount of opportunities within the business right now. Uh, some are live on our jobs board at www.dannysullivan.co.uk. Some of these jobs include the ground workers, plant and vehicle operators, marshals, um, signalers, electricians, welders, fitters, and so much more. But this is not exhaustive and we will be promoting lots more roles coming up in the near future. We pride ourselves on being a people organization. So if you're new to construction like myself, I started the Danny Sullivan Group on the 1st of June. Um, then we do offer a bespoke training program with RMF training. We offer apprenticeships, we offer placements. So if you are new to the industry or looking for a career within construction, then we're the, we're the organization for you. But also, if you are already a skilled uh, laborer and you're looking for a role within construction, we also offer upskilling. So we have over 200 people that have been with the organization for like over 20 years. And that says a lot about who we are and what we do um, and people are at the core of what we do we have contracts across all of hs2 um, and we're also on many prestigious projects across the length and breadth of the uk uh, we've already employed um, workless and homeless people onto the hs2 projects some of which are already in permanent employment and housing and are now on trading uh, and apprenticeships with the danny sullivan group so we are changing lives with our dedication to training and developing our people, and we want to do the same for you on this call. So if you are interested, please get in touch, and it's www.dannysullivan.co.uk. Wow, Brooke, you're ace. You've only <laughs> just joined the Danny Sullivan Group in June. Look at the passion there, folks. This is a company you want to work for. Brooke, that was superb. You can come on the webinar again in the future, 100%. Thank and it's you. brilliant to see you giving people a huge chance to change their lives. Bye from me, Brooke, but thanks very much indeed. And now straight over from Brooke to another person I know very well, Robert from Lynch Plant Hire. Rob, come on and tell us all about Lynch Plant Hire and your opportunities. Lynch Plant Hire, folks, is a really, really big player in the marketplace. Rob, please put on your camera, join me. And here we are, Rob. You've come up right from a, the age of a very small child to come into this industry and grow the way through. And now you're giving people the chances to grow with you. Come on, tell me all about it. Absolutely. Hey, Peter. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Rob Lynch. Uh, I'm a director at Lynch Plant Hire. Um, what we specialize in is heavy earth moving equipment for major construction projects. And the reason why we're talking to you right now is because in the West Midlands, the HS2 job is absolutely huge. We're going to need lots and lots of plant operators. Um, we're already working with uh, Balfour BT Vinci uh, on their Birmingham stretch of the HS2 project. Uh, we expect to need between 300 and 400 heavy plant operators on the job. Uh, we believe uh, passionately about local jobs for local people, and we're going to create lots of uh, development and training opportunities to make sure that that happens. Let me explain to you the kind of pieces of equipment. I don't do slides, but uh, let's see if this works. Let me just put this down. So these are the kind of pieces of equipment that we uh, require. So we need operators for excavator, we need operators for dozers, and we require uh, dump truck operators as well. And now, these two items actually require a lot of experience. Uh, so you couldn't expect to get qualified on these straight away and then go straight out onto a job. Our, our best operators are great because they've had literally years of experience. Um, a dump truck operator, you may need a slightly less uh, amount of time to become uh, fully competent to work on these sites. The good news about that is there are hundreds of these trucks that are going to be required and we need drivers for those over the next uh, three to four years. Um, when it comes to what we can provide in terms of training opportunities, uh, what we're able to do is we have a course called Careers in Plant, 
Uh, that's an intensive course where we can upskill someone to get onto an entry level uh, item of plant and get you out onto site. They're very limited because it's a very intensive uh, course that we do. Uh, so we can only mentor a limited amount of people. All you need to do is get onto our website, mention this particular course, uh, and then we will get back to you with what advice we can do for getting you into careers in plant. Uh, so uh, I hope that you get into construction. It's going to be a great place to be. Rob, it certainly is a fantastic place to be. That is a really novel way of showing people actually what those jobs are. Rob, thank you very much. Remember, Lynch Plant Hire, big player on HS2 and in the region as well. Rob, thanks very much indeed. And uh, good luck with finding all those operators. Now, so we're going to go straight to uh, Deborah, who's from the National Careers Service. Deborah is actually going to give us a little bit of a guidance. Deborah, you've got just a couple of minutes to really tell people what the National Career Service is all about. And uh, we just saw you there very briefly and hopefully we can get you back. Um, Deborah, just please tell us all about it in as quick a time as you possibly can. Sorry, Deborah, uh, overrun, I'm afraid. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. My name's Deborah Lissamall. I work with the National Career Service. So the National Career Service is a free service across England and West Midlands. We can help you explore the varied roles in construction. Through the service, we offer personalised, impartial information, advice and guidance. We want to help you make informed decisions about your future. And we can provide information on jobs, apprenticeships and training opportunities in your local area. We also support with those important topics such as CVs, interviews, applications and much more. Our professional careers advisors provide ongoing support and you can contact us through a range of channels such as our contact number on 0800 100 900 and that's free from landlines and most mobiles and that number is available from 8am to 10pm seven days a week. You can also search for us online by searching National Careers Service, and you'll see our website with lots of tools and information. We do work in close partnership with colleges, offering the fantastic opportunities such as the Construction Gateway course, and also with Department for Work and Pensions, delivering what we call the Construction Talent Hub. And when you register, and our advisors can help you register for that, you'll have information about lots of construction jobs, training opportunities that are available now and will become available in the future. So if you need any support, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you. Wow, Deborah, that was awesome. And you guys, I know at the uh, National Career Service, I know you guys are doing a really great job. So fantastic, National Career Service folks. We're gonna wrap this up. It's absolutely been an amazing opportunity to hear about all these jobs, folks. Remember, wmca.org.uk forward slash construction is where you need to go. It's bye from me. It's bye from everyone. Thanks very much for joining. Remember, you're going to be able to share this with other people after the event. Again, wmca.org.uk forward slash construction. Bye bye.